The Arab education system is failing and needs urgent reform, a report from the World Bank claims. Just what are the real causes of this failure? Why do Arab governments spend too little on education? And what should be done to address the deficit? This is Inside Story. Hello, I'm Hashim Ahalbara. Education in the Arab world needs urgent reform, according to a report from the World Bank. It says low literacy rates and poor standards are key barriers to economic development and employment. Although education is becoming more accessible, according to bank officials, there haven't been the same improvements witnessed in Asia and South America, for example. Literacy and school enrollment are low in comparison. The report says Jordan and Kuwait are the best educational reformers in the region. Djibouti, Yemen, Iraq and Morocco rank worse in terms of access and quality of education. While the report comes hot on the heels of a study by Arab League researchers which said 30% of the Arab world comprised of roughly 300 million people is illiterate. The World Bank says the region where more than half of the population is aged under 30 must act now to equip young people for the 100 million new jobs it will need to create in the next 15 years. The report stresses the need for updated teaching methods aimed at building the skills for creative thinking and lifelong learning. It suggests better incentives for teachers, more competitive performance-based salaries, and it says students must be given an education which is relevant to the labor market. Joining us now are our guests in Washington, D.C., Murad Zin. He is the World Bank's Education Sector Manager. And in Cairo, Mustafa Kamil is Sayed, his professor at Cairo University. Thank you very much, indeed, gentlemen, for, jo for joining us. Mr. Murad Zin in Washington, D.C., could you. you tell us briefly What's wrong with education in the Arab world? Um, thank you. Uh, let me start first by saying that uh, the conclusion of the report is not totally negative. Uh, there are many positive aspects, and uh, the Arab world and the Middle East and North African region, pre uh, more precisely, invested heavily in education uh, from the 16s. Uh, from the 60s. And what happened is that enrollment grew very rapidly, uh, Ill uh, illiteracy declined also rapidly, and life expectancy and infant mortality uh, improved. So there are some major improvement in the education. However, what went wrong is that the linkage of education to labor market and to growth, uh, uh, creating economic growth was weak. This is uh, what is now the main hurdle okay. uh, so and uh, so the main conclusion of the report. So Mr. Uh, Kamal is Sayed, uh, one third of 300 million people in the Arab world are illiterate. Isn't this a recipe for disaster in this part of the world? Um, uh, of course, this does not augur well for the Arab world at a time when uh, knowledge is becoming the uh, major engine for economic growth uh, for Arab countries uh, to uh, follow the model of um, East Asian countries who have succeeded in becoming newly industrialized countries. Of course, they must improve the level of education. They must prepare their workforce to assume uh, more uh, challenging jobs which require skills. So of course, I mean, this is a um, break on the um, rate of economic growth in the Arab world. Let me go back to Mr. Uh, Murad Zin. You've said that there were some improvements in different aspects of education, like the um, expanding of the access, like the closing of the gender disparity. But still, the quality is more and more poor. Is this because we are not investing that much in education, or just because there is a new mindset in this part of the world which, which doesn't take into account the importance of schools? Uh, first, uh, I would like to confirm that uh, the quality of education is poor, and there are now international tests uh, to which participate many countries in the region that prove it several times that uh, the quality of the uh, uh, education is much lower than in OECD countries, for example. And the reason is not that the countries in the region uh, did not spend enough on education. Our comparison shows that they spent actually more than other uh, regions in the world. Um, 
What is important uh, is the fact that education has been provided mainly uh, by the state, funded by the state, without enough partnerships with uh, uh, communities, with parents, and with, uh, um, with the private sector. And the education sector lacked accountability and lacked uh, the, the proper incentives that would uh, foster innovation. So is the main reason and, uh, now, as you are saying, Mr. Murad, uh, is the main reason because uh, of the um, uh, prevalence of the public sector as opposed to the private sector? Uh, no, I would not put it this way. The fact that the public sector th did not provide incentives and did not provide accountability or there was no policy that encouraged the education system to show better results. And in fact, in most of the countries, there is no culture of assessment. There is no culture of disseminating the results of the education sector in terms of the quality and linkage to the labor market. But still this is the main area where it, oh, okay. uh, we Ms. have a failure. Mr. Murad, at the same time, let me ask Kamel this time. Mr. Kamel, when you address this issue with Moroccans or Egyptians who are not doing very well in terms of education, they will tell you at the same time that look at our students. They prefer social sciences uh, um, as opposed to science and mathematics. So there's nothing we can do. We should change the mindset of our own students. What do you think of that? Um, no, I, well, first of all, I would uh, not agree with this statement that uh, it is because uh, the state, you know, has taken up the major responsibility for education that, you know, its quality has gone down. In fact, we have many examples uh, of private educational institutions which are not doing um, very well, uh, uh, which offer their students certificates, but uh, the quality of their education is not uh, much better than in government schools. Uh, we should uh, recognize also that uh, in the past, uh, uh, the leaders of um, the independence um, uh, governments <coughs> in these countries came from government schools. Uh, but I think the um, cause for uh, this um, predicament of the education system in Arab countries is not the same. Uh, I think in countries like Morocco and uh, Egypt, uh, the fact that um, the uh, student body is uh, very large compared to the amount of investments that is directed to education, uh, maybe it is as a proportion of the GDP of these countries it is quite high, in fact much higher than in uh, okay. other countries. Uh, it is usually over 5 percent, uh, but I think still this is not enough, but I think there are many uh, reasons, so okay. I think we should not um, uh, Absolutely. generalize uh, uh, about this. I agree with you. So Mr. Murad, one has to be very fair in dealing with these countries. You have the Gulf countries, for example, with unprecedented uh, economic booms, with a lot of cash to improve schools. You have countries like Djibouti, Morocco, and Egypt, where education doesn't seem to be a radar on the, a blip on their radar screen, and they have other top priorities, like providing shelter, schools, houses, and food for their own people. How can we juggle both things? Uh, as I said before, I think the level of spending is not the main problem, uh, and countries have been spending enough. Now, how can we guarantee that the expenditure on education are effective and promote the type of uh, learning that, w that uh, we would like to see? This is what the report proposes. The report proposes a framework for policy and, ref and a new type of reforms, which still insist on the importance of the role of the state in terms of providing funding to education, but at the same time, uh, we need to promote better incentives. It's a culture of result-oriented uh, contracts that is needed, and also partnerships with other um, stakeholders in the education uh, system. We have the communities, okay. we have the non-government sector. and. The last point I would like to finish is very important, which is accountability. Uh, we'll definitely, How to Mr. Give voice. Murad, Mr. Murad, we'll definitely go yes. back in our uh, to talk in detail about ac accountability, the public sector versus the private sector. But stay with uh, around gentlemen, time for a shorter break. When we come back, we talk about other areas where the Arab world is also failing. <laughs> 